Hey guys, so this weekend I was out of town and I was lucky enough to go to a Hobby Lobby, or unluckily for my bank account, I suppose you could say. Um, I'd never been to one before and they just happened to have stamps on sale for 40% off, so I was pretty excited about that. And I bought these. Um, they're very large. Uh, they're all like big background stamps and I've been wanting some of these for a long time. So I was pretty excited to find these. Um, let me show you, I only had one background stamp, which is this guy, which I'm sure you've seen me use. And I like it, but there's only so many times that you can use this before you're like, okay, I've used that a million times. So, this one is called the Grungy Grid Background. These are all by Stamp Abilities, which I think is just the Hobby Lobby brand, but. So there's this one. Um, this is not a background, I'll show you that one in a second. This is like a text, it is called Faded Text Background. But it's, you can't, I don't even think it's English, you definitely, I can't read it. Maybe you can, but I thought it was a cool look. Then there's this guy, which is Mesh Background. So it looks like that. And then the other stamp I bought, not a background, but can be sort of used as a background. This one is called Today Journaling Block. And it looks like this. This one was on clearance for $5.39. And it looks like this. So I thought that, first of all, it's really easy to buy, it's really easy to buy stamps and never use them. Um, like I have a small stash of stamps that I keep for me. These are like my purchase stamps. Mostly I make my own stamps now. So years ago I bought this stamp and it's gotten a lot of use but mostly because I let my students use it sometimes and then I steal it whenever I want to use it. You can barely... there you go. It's like a clock with wings. And then this is by Ink Dinkadoo and uh, it's number 903. Another one that I have that I purchased a long time ago. Let's see. Oh, I guess he's not even in there. I have a bike stamp. I don't know where it is. These are stamps that I got from someone else. Never even used this one. I don't even know if she, Well, I guess someone used it once, but that... Oh, I bought this one a long time ago. Now boarding. I guess this would work as a background. This is a stamp. My students have used it a bunch, but I don't know that I've ever used it for anything. This guy I use periodically. It's like people pointing and looking up. I like that one a lot. I used this like one time on a, if I was stranded on a desert island, which you guys have seen that in part part one. Uh, that's Waves. Never have used that one. This is a cool, it's a free stamp, but it's metal and I, I don't even know where I got this, but I've had it thinking if I ever did uh, like something in beeswax, I could stamp into the wax with this, but you know, I've never used it. I should try it. Oh, here's another one that I have definitely never used that I bought when I first got into stamps, and this is a four leaf clover. Ink Dinkadoo again. And this is like a dancing guy. Someone gave me this, so. But basically the point of me showing you those is that I have all these stamps and I never ever use these ones. Um, I don't want to get rid of them because I'm like, oh, maybe one day I will want to make a Dancing Man page. But the point is that it's really easy to buy a bunch of stamps that you never use. So I have a rule for myself when I buy stamps for me that I have to think of at least three different ways to use it. So this stamp, the obvious way is to stamp it and journal in it. But I also thought that I could block out and just use that frame without the lines. And I could do just the lines. So I actually have a page, I think, in here that I did that. Let's see. I thought I did it. <clears throat> there we go. So I use this stamp right here. So you can see the today, but like the frame isn't there anymore because I stamped onto this like journaling spot thingy, which I also got a Hobby Lobby. So that's like one way to use it. So this I figure I'll get a use. Um, 
let me show you before we get into like our technique let me show you pages that I have made oh here we go alright this doesn't actually use my new stamp but it's really cool so I wanted to show you um, you might remember that I made from the cranky page here I had done the corners using my lace stamp which is this one here and so for this page back here I blocked off the stamp with paper so that it didn't mess up and it looks way cooler if I come up the background is just bits of dictionary covered with gel medium and then some red paint on top of it I think I used a heavy body red paint like golden uh, I think it's Quinn red or something like that and then these are two separate images that worked really well together down here it says if you can read that once we were new and careless and free and then this is just an index card that I taped with some washi tape top and bottom because I was working with like my travel kit so I was limited to what I had in there so there's that page um, another page that I worked on while I was out of town is this which is the back of the one that I sewed around the edges and so I used you can see I used my Harlequin stamp on the background with my new ink I forgot to show you those so you guys have seen me use the archival black ink a lot while well, I got new colors I got coffee and sepia which they are very similar but they like they look more similar I think in this video than they do on paper but I was happy to I've been wanting different colors so I was happy to buy new ones anyway so this has a magazine image here I cut some scraps of magazine to make a border and then I used one of my new journaling spots and uh, I read about how we were working on our art journals in a coffee shop and about our trip so there's that and let's see I made a lot of pages actually I don't always art journal as much so this is the first page I made like really playing with the stamps and so you can see like this is the mesh stamp and then the text stamp is here and like the first impression is really dark and then when you stamp elsewhere I don't know if you can see like here's like a lighter version of the mesh this is a lighter version of the mesh here so like I'll ink it once but then stamp it a few times to get multiple shades of the darkness I used the today stamp here um, I, ha I used actual postage stamps because I have like a huge stash of them and they worked. This was, I drew kind of a version of the building that was across the street from where I was art journaling. Um, doesn't look exactly like the building, but I think that it works. And then I did some journaling here, and I did some journaling down here. So I really, like, this is not my usual style of page, but I love it. Um, then I worked on, this I worked on in the car. And I had already tested out the stamp, like one impression and then multiple faded impressions of the stamp all around the background. And I actually worked on this page in the car. Um, I used some stickers up here. It says, sometimes we dance. This is a page from French Dictionary. This is legs from a, I think it's a Vogue magazine. And then I did journaling around the outside edge. Here's some more of the same color washi tape because I only had one color of washi tape with me. So I, they're all kind of a color theme. And then the paint is just um, tube acrylic paints that I applied with my fingers because I was working in the car in the passenger seat. So I couldn't get too fancy. But I like how it turned out. This page, another one playing with the new stamps. You can see there's a lot of texture in the background. There's the word stamp the mesh I added I used um, what is this a pro letter set pro marker I think it's alcohol based with a stencil to make like these circles here and here this is like a vintage receipt from a dentist wait 
yeah, dentist office, Dr. S. Gobb Fine in Providence, Rhode Island, and a friend of mine gave me these, and I, it's from like 1935, so I added that in. This is a photograph, and uh, we'll talk about this possibly in this, like a little bit later in the technique video, but um, I was trying to use gel medium to add this photograph, and it kept curling up, and I finally just decided to tape around the edges. So if you're adding a photograph and you're having trouble, just use some clear scotch tape. It might not be acid free, but I don't think it really matters when it comes to your art journal. Um, some washi tape here. This is a doily that I colored a little, just with a little distress ink, I think, or yeah, I think it was distress ink, just to make it less bright white. And then Good Company, I'm trying to get it so you can see it. Good Company and a Journey makes the way seem shorter. So there's that page. And then this is the page that I am, like I did some experimenting with my stamps yesterday and here's what I came up with. And I'm gonna show you how to do all of these. So I made a border using the background stamp so that I could like come up with different techniques for it. And then the background, you can see there's white text here. This is actually the gesso resist technique that I'm gonna show you in a little bit here. And like I stamp with gesso, let it dry, and then add distress inks on top. And it, it's a really cool look. This is a photograph, again, I added the photograph with just sellotape around the edges. And then I decided to try stamping right on top of it. And it kind of smears, like I just smeared it a little bit. But I think that it's, it's gonna stay pretty well, like unless I really try to rub it off. But I think if you wanted to rub it off, you probably could. Um, here's the other page. This is the other, and I'll show you this more. Um, I turned the background stamp, you can't really tell exactly, but I only inked it so that it would make a circle, so instead of being a full background, it was just a circle, so that was the result of that. Added some scrap paper with gesso. And then here, this is a random, I have a huge stash, stash of like random photographs and I finally am starting to use them, so that's one there. So, let us get to our different techniques that you can do using these large stamps. So if you had some large stamps and you don't know what to do with them, or if you are wanting to buy large stamps but you want to make sure you have lots of uses, this is the video for you. Plus it's just a good way to make different backgrounds, so.